Hey everyone, it's Ryan here. In today's video, I wanted to show you the mobile way that I uh, analyze deals on my phone. I know in a previous video, I showed a spreadsheet that I use, which is free by the way, um, to be able to analyze deals on the computer. A lot of people like to use that spreadsheet when they're looking through realtor.com and Zillow on their computer. It also offers a deal analysis page, which gives you a bit, or, bit better in-depth projection as to what your property is going to be bringing in. This is the mobile interface. It's a nice, uh, quick and easy way to analyze a deal kind of on the spot. So say you're communicating with a contractor, you're not down at your computer, um, you just got it, all you have on hand is your phone, it gives you a nice easy way to get an idea of if a property is even worth looking into. So to start off, we have our price. I'm going off of the deal that I closed on. So I bought it for 174,900. Uh, you may not find properties for that price in your area, but this still is just a proof of concept showing off of my experience, how I use this app. So my down payment, I was doing a 15% down payment because it was a conventional loan because I was going to live in one half. I was required to do at least 15% down if I did conventional. My interest rate, I actually locked it in at 3.5%. Now, this was back in 2021. Um, you're not seeing those interest rates right now um, unless you have sort of setups or you're doing like a, a, a I guess, a, a seller finance deal, they, you may inherit a rate that's a lot lower. Uh, closing costs, my closing costs were about $5,000. You have these nice toggles for adding a thousand or subtracting a thousand real easily and quickly. It's one thing I like about this compared to the spreadsheet. Rehab costs, mine was actually $7,500 in total. Um, that was just for some flooring replacements um, and also some paint. Um, this may vary based on your area and the size of the property that you're, rehab, that you're doing any renovations to. My rental income, I'm actually bringing in $1,200 a month um, on the other unit. Uh, that also makes it so that my mortgage for the, all the, uh, information above brought my mortgage to 667. So now one thing as well, don't forget to account for taxes and insurance. Uh, I have those accounted for, and that should help round out the deal. Give me a better idea of things. Utilities. If you're paying utilities, do not forget to put this in. Um, I buy all my properties separately metered. I also make sure that if they aren't separately metered, I account for the expense of my CapEx to make sure that they, I can make them separately metered because I like to account for rent already, but I don't want to try to do the calculations when it comes to water. Now, it just depends on you. If you buy a property and you want to do that, that's totally fine. I know there's a triplex in the area right now um, for sale, but they've got it not separately metered. And so every single month, they probably have to account for, okay, how do I take uh, this water bill, split it three ways, and then bill everybody? That's just extra work I don't want to have to do. And so I try to make it simple and easy for myself, uh, and I'd recommend you do the same. So you can account for utilities if you want, you don't have to. Maintenance, you can account for if you want, you don't have to. Um, and then miscellaneous. It's always a good idea to set some money aside for maintenance every single month. Um, so we're gonna set maybe 50 to 100, we'll set $100 a month aside. Um, then CapEx, this is just funds that you have for renovation, stuff like that. I recommend 10%. Um, property management, always, always, always account for property management. I mentioned that in the spreadsheet video as well. It's good to have it even if you are managing it yourself because if you ever want to offload that work to somebody else, you're at least accounting for the um, current rates of property management. Right now, I think it's about 10% generally across the board. It may vary for you. Um, one thing as well is you might want to work towards negotiating that down over time too to get better rates. Um, one thing to account for as well is vacancy. I usually shoot for 7%. I hope to not have 7% vacancy, but it could happen. And you're having that money there just in case you do have vacancies. So we have all our numbers done here. As you can see up in the top, it's actually red right now. If I had my unit rented out as well, I'd be in the green about 393. But as we're only getting 1200 a month, um, we have a negative 5.9% cash on cash return a uh, 1.3 return on investment, um, negative 191 cash flow. Now this is with me living in one unit. So that's just to show that. Um, and then we also have some more in-depth information, your net operating income and your debt service. Um, so that's a quick rundown of using the app. Um, hopefully this helped you out. I do like that it shows the red and green up in the top uh, to give you an idea of if you're cash flowing or not. Um, I will have a link to this app in the description. If you guys want to download this app, it's totally free. Uh, there's no even paid version of it. Uh, it's just totally, totally free. So this is a good option in comparison to the spreadsheet that I have available for free as well. I'll drop a link to that in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. Uh, feel free to let me know if you have any questions about it and I'll see you guys in the next video.